Hello. How are we this week? Really fantastic by the sound of that. Woo! I love that that was just a I met a dog moment from the back. So this week we are talking about love and respect. Last week Andy came up and spoke to us about the importance of consent. Who was here last week? And what points were kind of the biggest for you last week? Thank you. And if they wanted tea before, they don't necessarily need tea again. And all of that. So the importance of consent. This week, we are looking at our bodies. Respect for our bodies as a gift from God. Now, if I turn it on, it will work. Our bodies, yay. This is a really big topic Um, And there's so much that we could discuss in this, but I'm just going to keep it to a minimum tonight because you all don't want to listen to me for many hours. Um, So society and social media um, impacts our respect for our bodies a lot. We see in so many instances what society believes is the perfect body. But realistically, and I'm going to start with the females, Australia in the modelling industry, so what we see out in, um, in the shops everywhere, Um, is so far behind the rest of the world. We are seeing size 8 models instead of the realistic size 8 to 16 models. So there's a contrast for you there. Um, And then for the guys, we are seeing guys who have, you know, 6 to 8 packs when realistically not all of us do. And that's a good comparison for anyone who who doesn't get that. I'm sorry. Um, But in saying that, we have to respect those around us and their bodies as well. So we need to not shame others into thinking that they have the wrong shaped body, like you see up there, whichever one you want to go with. (laughs) Thanks for adding that, DMAC. Um, But we might not know what people are going through their health struggles or if they don't have any or, you know, there are things that we need to consider before we start to shame people's on their and comment people on their appearances. So I'm going to look at a few verses and I want to start with Genesis 1.27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. And male and female, he created them. I think it's important to acknowledge that when we're discussing love and respect for our bodies that we have been created in the image of God. In Ephesians 2.10, we read, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, created in Christ Jesus, doing good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So God created us, we are his handiwork, we are his masterpiece. If anyone works with, the, with your hands, if you're a builder or a mechanic or have been, there is somewhat of a huge satisfaction when you've completed a project or you see your handiwork or hard work in a greater scheme of a plan. So God has created us in his image. We are his handiwork and his masterpiece. Next, I want to look at Psalm 139 verse 14. We read, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Which is a small change of pace, but we are praising that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. These three verses are a beautiful reminder of our creation, and this is important to remember when we think about our bodies. So I've got an activity. And apart from dropping all the pens during the last song... I'm going to hand out a few pieces of paper and I'm really sorry I don't have enough for everyone because that's my fault. You can share. Take one and pass it along and if you can spread it back, that would be fantastic. There are two different ones on there. Uh, It's two different pieces of paper, more to the point. One has the verse Psalm 139 and the other has Psalm 210. 
No, you just need one. Everyone gets a different one. Thank you for sharing. I want you to spend the next couple of minutes just thinking about the verse that you've got in front of you or next to you, whichever one you want. I want you to think about that verse and how it applies or how it works in your life. So those who don't, I'm going to leave this one on the screen um, because we're scattered everywhere. And I want you to actually think about what that means. So with the pieces of paper that are going around, I've actually changed it. So it's referring to I, so you're reading it to yourself. And I just want, yeah, I want you to spend some time thinking about that. If you would like to discuss with the person next to you, you're more than welcome to, but I'm not going to force you to. Does anybody want actually one of their own? There's further activities that we'll be using these for as well. A lot of hard work went into these. Thank you, Susanna. Paper from <laughs> So coming back Together, I know that some of us are having wonderful conversations and others are just staring at our phones, which is totally okay. We are going to move on. You can, you can continue these conversations later. These are fantastic conversations. Continue them later. Um, hopefully, you'll have more to input into them once I finish. Fingers crossed. Or you'll just leave not knowing what I said. We're hoping for the earlier one. So next one we have 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, but you were bought at a price. Therefore, honour your God, honor God with your body, bodies. So I've skimmed through three verses and I'm actually going to spend a little bit more time on this verse. I get this verse, this passage, quoted at me quite a lot. Ever since I've got tattoos, my mum and other people in my family have quoted this one at me. You, you know, <laughs> that's how I respond every single time. You know, the, the part of the verse that I'm going to, you know, have a little bit to say about is, you know, I don't feel like I'm disrespecting my temple, my body, because I've got tattoos. In fact, I feel like I'm just decorating the walls a little bit. That's what I tell my mum and she just shakes her head at me. So glad she's not here. <laughs> so we need to treat our bodies as temples because they are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Um, and we live in them every single day. So um, when I say temples of the Holy Spirit, like 
Does everybody know what a temple is? <laughs> okay, there's quite a few people doing this one. I don't know what... <laughs> Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> you know, I went through the sermon with Matt earlier and I probably expected that one who has a medical background, not, not from others, but that is okay. So I'm in a place of worship. That's what I'm referring to. Um, so temple as a place of worship. So um, we're going to have a look at what it means to respect our temples. So respecting the temple as our bodies. So there's five points. First of all, I don't think I've actually written these down, which is fine. Eating healthily and nourishing our bodies. Now, I'm not perfect at this because I have been known to demolish a one litre tub of ice cream in one sitting. Especially when Australian guidelines state that it's only two scoops, which is 75 grams um, of ice cream per day, is considered healthy in, in guidelines. I like ice cream. <laughs> um, but does anybody here have a food allergy or intolerance? <laughs> Helen doesn't understand my ice cream because she, she can't have it. <laughs> so there are some foods that nourish our bodies and there are other foods that make us sick. And that's kind of what we're talking about with healthy foods. Healthy foods across the, like all of us, are very much different. Um, from a young age, my mum used to always say, you don't get dessert until you eat all your veggies, which is probably why I eat a one litre tub of ice cream, now that I think about it. <laughs> um, Australian guidelines recommend six servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit per day. Does, this is an updated version. Ooh. Does anybody here do that? Because if you do, I would like to high five you. Because I have the two servings of fruit on my ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the six servings of veggies? Do you make just suggested carrot on ice cream? Don't know if anyone's tried that. Carrot cake. Carrot cake, well done. You need to fuel your bodies with the right foods. And so that will help you sustain your energy and nutrients on a daily basis. So when I talk about healthy foods, I'm not necessarily talking about eating three servings of ice cream a day um, or, you know, fruit on that ice cream just to make it a little bit healthier. Um, second is drinking the right fluids. So mainly water. And now I am the worst at this. <laughs> um, if you drink the recommended two litres of water a day, I admire you. Is, uh, I am someone who struggles to drink tap water and I started having a little bit of a coughing fit before, so I currently have a glass of water down here, which is very unheard of for me. <laughs> there are some people like, yay. Um, but I have spent about 10 years of my life buying and drinking bottled water just because I don't like the taste of tap water. And even still, I didn't drink the recommended two litres of water a day. Um, but full, filling your bodies with sugar, caffeine, or alcohol, <laughs> or a mix of all is not nourishing your body. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't drink alcohol. I am just saying that you need to think about drinking it healthily and in moderation. And that is really important, the moderation part. Who has ever woken up with a hangover in the past? Now. I would like to clarify what I mean by hangover because there's two types of hangovers. I've never experienced an alcohol hangover, but I have experienced a caffeine slash sugar hangover. So my question is, who has woken up with a hangover before? And you do not have to tell me if it's alcohol or sugar or caffeine related. 
dehydrate. Well, that's not really a hangover. It is, yes. This is your body's response to not drinking the right fluids. And it's trying to process the sugar, the caffeine, or the, and the alcohol, or all of them mixed together in your body. Third point is exercise. Exercise is one of the easiest ways to improve your health, as well as your mental well-being. What I mean by exercise isn't doing a tough mutter or running a marathon without training, but being active in a gym environment or outdoors. One of my goals recently is to go for a 20 to 25 minute walk every day. Um, and it's really not easy with Melbourne's ever changing weather. And I could be walking, I think this happened the other day, I went walking and then it started raining, it was not great. Um, I know some of you go to the gym together, um, and I know other of you, others of you go to bounce somewhat regularly <laughs> as a form of exercise, and it is a fun activity that you get to do together. Um, so the Australian guidelines, I'm pulling these out tonight, the Australian guidelines state a minimum of 150 per minutes per week, which is about 20 to 25 minutes per day, is the guidelines for activity, the recommended guidelines for activity. The benefits of physical activity can be health related. Um, it can give you more energy, better your mood, feel more relaxed, and even help you sleep better. So, <laughs> fourthly, our fourth point is loving yourself. Learning to love your own skin that you live in and yourself, because they are two different things, may not be easy, but it is important. So those of you who have one of these cards, you turn it over, there are five little dots, dashes, whatever's there. If you do not have one, I would really encourage you to pull out your phone right now, if you haven't already got it in your hand. I want you to think of five things that you love about yourself. It could be your punniness, your height, your love for puppies. Whatever you want it to be, and I want you to take the next couple of minutes of writing it down. If you need a pen, I did come prepared and I dropped them earlier but I'm gonna pass them around. So five things, guys. I can just hear Chloe in the background going, I'm cute, I make everyone laugh. Your ability to 
How are we going with our five things? Does anybody need any more time or have we got our five things? We've got our five things. So here's the challenge for the week and I haven't actually finished and you're getting a challenge. I want you to take the pieces of card that you have (laughs) with you or your phone because you'll have that all week as well. So during the week... Whenever you have a doubt about yourself, and we all have them sometime during the week, we, I want you to take the negatives and turn them into the positives that you have just written down. So I want you to get away from the negative and think about the positives because you need to learn to love yourself. And it is not easy sometimes. I'm not going to say that it is. But it's a starting point. So fifth and the last point is listen to your body. So have you ever woken up in the morning feeling like you've been hit by a bus? The dread of a flu or the cold coming on. The stiffness kicking in. Just being, a, just being unable to move without pain. This is probably your body telling you that you need a little bit of rest. In our busy world, it is hard not to keep going and not to let others down who are around us and expecting us to do certain work. I have the hardest time in saying the word no. I like to commit to things a lot to help others, but if not, mo- if not sometimes, most of the times, I find myself burning out and not having time for myself or not looking after myself. So you need to listen to your body when it's telling you that it's not functioning properly and take the time to rest. Maybe even take the time to pray and seek God's guidance on what he wants you to prioritise in your life. So, our five things. Eating healthy, drinking the right fluids, exercising, loving yourself and listening to your bodies. Our bodies are our temples for God. We must learn to love and respect them. And although I could talk about respect and our bodies for a very long time, we need to consider and what we need to consider on a daily basis. I think we need to take home those five things that we have said today and ask ourselves the question, am I respecting my body in all of these areas? How can I improve and respect my body? So I'm going to pray. I'm going to leave that question up there if you would like to write it down on your piece of paper or write it down on your phone. To think about this week, I would encourage that. But I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have made each and every one of us uniquely yours. That we have been made in the image of you. That we are your wonderful masterpiece. I thank you that each and every one of us has been fearfully and wonderfully made by you. Amen.